Hi there, Klamath County. I'm Klamath County Commissioner Kelly Minty Morris here with Dr. Wendy Warren uh, this morning, who is the Klamath County Health Officer. Uh, we wanted to address some questions related to COVID-19, so thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Uh, we've got a lot of questions from Facebook from our community, so we'll just launch right in. What should a person do, Dr. Warren, if they don't have a primary care physician? So there are several options in town. They can go to one of our walk-in clinics and see someone. Um, there is a flu testing site that is open to everyone. It's located down at the pavilion and they can get tested there. Those results then go to a physician who will call them with the results and also discuss how they're feeling and make plans for other care that they might need. Um, they also could go to the emergency room and if they're feeling very ill, but we're trying to reserve that for people that are, that are feeling too poorly to go to a walk-in center or go to a testing site. And I'm really glad you brought up testing. The next inquiry has a couple of parts. We know there's flu going around and now with the coronavirus, how is it determined who gets tested for coronavirus and do we have many tests available? So the determination for who gets tested is made by the person's physician or group of physicians that care for them. Um, at the present time, we have better access to testing material than we had a week ago. We are able to be a little more broad in our testing and hopefully that will let us know how much this is doing in our community and what's happening here in Klamath Falls. And so your physician is, will know if you should be tested. They will also be, know how many testing is available that day. And if we run out, they will know that it's not available at that moment. But in general, the availability has improved as has the turnaround time for testing. Um, was taking quite a while for tests to come back. Now is taking, we're saying three to five days, maybe up to seven days. Great, that's an excellent improvement. Uh, the next question again comes to us via Facebook. Uh, this is about you know, why we can't get more information about the person who had COVID-19 and you know, we know that they've recovered, mm -hmm. but um, why do we withhold some of the really personal information about that person? Well, COVID-19 is a medical condition. It's also a condition that public health is obviously interested in. And we at public health feel that we need to be careful of confidentiality and therefore limited information is released. And as we talked about a while ago, it's just important that people know that public health is contacting people who might have been exposed, that they're getting monitored and they're getting tested if they need to be. I think that's a really important point to underscore is that you will be contacted if mm -hmm. there's a chance that you've been in contact mm -hmm. with this person. And the last, the first case we had um, was travel related. This last case involved a healthcare worker and therefore there's a little more information about that in terms of the fact that the person was a healthcare worker because we're working with Sky Lakes Medical Center and um, people that were involved with this person to try and get them get the appropriate testing and contacting the appropriate people. Right, and I'm glad you brought up Sky Lakes. They've been an excellent partner. Uh, so the next question is really about the terminology related to the outbreak. This is new terminology for most of us. So can you share with us the difference between a presumed or presumptive case and then a confirmed case? So when we first started testing, the tests were primarily done at the Oregon um, State Lab, and those tests were considered, when they came back positive, were considered to be presumptive and were sent on to the CDC, and they confirmed it um, by doing another test. Now we have a lot of private companies that are testing, and that's why we've been able to expand our testing capacity, and those, com those companies do not send their tests on to the CDC. So we are assuming now that anyone who tests positive is a confirmed case. So presumptive isn't really part of the, the definition anymore. And I mean, a great um, area that we can point to that things have been moving quickly and evolving and you know, we're all, there's, there's a lot of change that's um, been involved in this. So the last question has to do with test results. You've already sort of addressed this, but mm -hmm. um, what can we expect in terms of timing on that? The fastest I've seen anything come back is 48 hours. Um, we'd like it to be 24 hours, but they do have to be sent out from here. So there's a delay in terms of time. They get sent out 
the results have to come back. So arrival time at the facility um, and the time that those are sent out by our, the laboratory at Sky Lakes. Um, and I've seen them take a long time. Um, nine days is the longest, but that doesn't seem to be happening anymore. We're really hoping that we'll continue to have a three to five day turnaround. Might be sooner, could be a little bit later. Depends on the demands on the laboratories that are doing the testing. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for taking some time out to you know be transparent and answer questions. I know you're extraordinarily busy. Uh, the community thanks you. Klamath County Board of Commissioners, thank you as well. Thank you.